it is 301. I'd like to call the Muskegon County Full Board of Commissioners to order. First, I would like to ask uh, Commissioner Mahoney to lead us in a prayer. Commissioner Mahoney, you're muted. Well, the Lord heard me the first time, but let's pray. <laughs> Lord, please give your humble servants wisdom to make decisions on behalf of the residents of Muskegon County to improve their lives. These are troubling times nationally, but Muskegon County folks have faced local issues with reasonable responses and help the commissioners follow their example. Lord, as we deliberate and make decisions for the benefit of the residents, please let us rely on your guidance and not let personal views obscure the cooperativeness, cooperation necessary to make Muskegon County a great place to live, work, and play. And as always, we ask that you watch over those who protect us both here and abroad. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Mahoney. And Commissioner Nash, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, Commissioner Foster, would you go ahead and lead us in the, in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, ma'am, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag United of the United States of America, to the Republic, for which it stands, one, one nation, nation on under God, God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Foster. Thank you. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Vice Chair Foster. Here. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Here. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Here. Thank you. Chairman Hughes. Here. Commissioner Laring. Here. Commissioner Mahoney. Here. Commissioner Nash. Here. Commissioner Skolnick. Here. Commissioner Snyder. Here. Commissioner Wilkins. Here. Nine present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have a quorum. Next, I will entertain a motion for the approval of the agenda. So moved. Support. We have a motion in support. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Vice Chair Foster. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Nine yes. And that motion carries. Next on our agenda is approval of the minutes of June 23rd, 2020. Second. Motion, motion by Commissioner Wilkins, second by Commissioner Javi Wright. Any questions or concerns on the minutes? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Vice Chair Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. <laughs> Chairman Hughes. Yes. Nine yes. Thank you, and that motion carries. Next, we have a presentation by the Director of Public Health, Kathy Moore. Thank you, uh, Chairman Hughes. Um, just to, to make it quite brief, um, Muskegon County residents, even though our uh, region was moved uh, a couple of weeks ago from medium to medium high, and then last week to high, uh, Muskegon County residents um, and our numbers continue to show a uh, downward trajectory for our positivity rate. 
So the positivity rate is really based on the overall number of tests, the number of positive within that test. That does not mean that we have not seen an increase in cases. We have actually seen um, a recent increase in the number of cases. Uh, the number of cases a few weeks ago were mainly um, um, in aggregate facilities and they were more severe cases. The number of cases as of recently has been in the uh, 20 to 29 age group and the 30 to 39 age group. Um, individuals under 40 uh, make up approximately 60% of the new cases recently. But again, those cases are not as severe as some of the uh, previous cases that uh, we've experienced before. The, um, the recent profile uh, that was sent actually show, even though our number of cases continue to uh, increase, um, not at a rate um, that some of the other contiguous counties are experiencing, and our number of recovered uh, continues to increase as well. So uh, very proud to report thanks to um, our wonderful staff here at Public Health and our very responsible residents that uh, we are managing less than 200 active cases uh, here in Muskegon County. I will pause there for questions. Thank you, Kathy, that's really good news. Does anybody have any questions for Kathy Moore? Madam Chair, may yes, I? Yes. yes, go ahead, Commissioner Foster. Kathy, I saw the memo you sent out about doing foster homes and congregate care facilities and their staff. Um, that testing started yesterday, am I correct? Yes, it did. And are you feeling or you're doing this because you figure there's more cases there or you're convinced more cases there and when will we see the results? Um, we will see the results uh, within probably a week after testing, but that testing is being spread over two weeks. Uh, we are doing that so that we can start with the baseline data. The real goal is to identify positive residents I mean, residents and or workers and isolate them uh, so that we don't have this continuous spread. The benefit of doing it now is that the state um, issued a, um, um, a process where they would provide uh, emergency medical staff to uh, nursing homes as well as adult foster care homes uh, within this period of time um, if they had positive cases and they did not have additional staff to help cover. So this was the really, uh, the most optimal time to issue an order and to proceed with testing. And especially at a time where our numbers are trickling down, we really don't want to, um, uh, to, to have that spread continuing within those close living quarters. Perfect, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Madam Chair? Yes, go right ahead, Commissioner Hubby Yeah, uh, what is the current status of testing of the general public, uh, Kathy? Well, the, um, the demand has increased uh, due to the lifting of the stay home order and um, uh, additional community spread, while the capacity has decreased. The um, wall, wall marked on Henry Street uh, is no longer offering testing. Rite Aid is offering testing, but there is um, there there are some barriers to get in. Um, Mercy Health has um, has reduced their testing. The state of Michigan, we were working with the state. They were going to bring. Uh, they had contracted with a company to um, conduct brick and mortar, just walk in testing here in the community. They canceled the contract on June twenty fourth. They uh, they said today that they are still working um, on uh, identifying a new vendor for that. Um, I've had uh, contacts with Mercy Health as late as today. Um, their vice president contacted me, um, seeing if we could work collaboratively to bring more test um, opportunities to Muskegon County. Uh, right now, uh, the best we can do is um, if individuals are symptomatic, they should contact their provider. Um, also, uh, Rite Aid is an option. And uh, Call 211 has now a contract with the state to help individuals identify uh, the closest testing sites. And then they will also help our residents uh, navigate 
the system to get registered for those sites. Thank you. Kathy, I have a question for you. Yes. We, I, had a, I was contacted by one of our employees that had been exposed to COVID and he contacted the health department wondering what his options were, what he was supposed to do. And are we not able to give our employees a test if they need one? No, we, we are not, especially if they are um, asymptomatic. And okay. so I, um, I, cannot, I can order a test for an individual that, um, to protect the public, but not, but not to diagnose that individual. So I've ordered uh, several tests for uh, JC, JTC youth who are um, being intaked at the facility, but that's really to understand the status and protect the employees and the rest of the staff. They're in a, they're in a congregate setting. It's a little bit different. Thank you. Do you recommend that they uh, quarantine for 15 days or 14 days? If, if they have been exposed to a positive COVID-19 um, individual, I recommend that they work with the health department. We have to investigate. There's several, several things like when their last um, point of contact was, are they experiencing any symptoms? Um, do they have the ability to work remotely? There, there are so many questions. Um, but so we recommend that um, they work with us and then uh, we make a recommendation after that. All right. Thank you. Because it sounded like he was, um, whoever he talked to at the health department was unfamiliar with what he was supposed to do. So I will have him make sure he contacts you again. Absolutely. And normally if he, if he notify his um, employer, which is one of our department heads, um, we are on a first name basis. So uh, normally I work with the department heads uh, along with Kristen Wade uh, at Human Resources and um, we all jointly uh, figure out the optimal response. Thank you. I know that the board did make a decision on you know, what we would do if one of our employees came down with it. Um, we should make sure that, uh, Mr. Administrator, I guess I'm kind of talking to you on this, we should make sure that HR puts something out to all the employees so if something does happen, they know what to do and where to go. Yes, we are working on that as well. We're uh, actually, it's on the agenda for tomorrow. It's a director's meeting as well. To okay, review, perfect. To do that once again, and we'll make sure our employees uh, know what they should be doing. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for Kathy Moore? <laughs> I guess we're all set. Kathy, thank you very much for the update. I'm really glad to hear we have good news in our county. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Now we will move on to public comment on an agenda item. Do I have any members of the public who would like to have a comment? Can we have the agenda moved up? Yes, please. Agenda move up? Oh, please move the agenda up. Do I have any members of the public that would like to have a comment? Sorry, Chris. Yes, Chris, can you Chris hear me Kyla? all right? Yes, Chris, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I noticed on the agenda over the last month, uh, three different times there have been resolutions on uh, declaring racism a public health crisis. And I noted there was one uh, mentioned by Commissioner Nash on June 23, asking what the progress was. And you had made some comment, you might be working on that. So I was interested in knowing um, why those started showing up on the agenda and why there hasn't been some official motion or discussion during the board meetings. And if you do have any active uh, work going on in those, uh, on that, idea. Thank you, Chris. Are there any other comments? Any other comments? Any other members of the public would like to have a public comment? Seeing none, we will move on to communications. We have three, we have four letters of communication. You can 
read those now or at your leisure. They will be included in the minutes of the next meeting. In, do the board have any comments on those? Seeing none, we will move on to committee reports. Courts wait, 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 wait. Go I'm ahead. Sorry, I Go can't ahead. unmute fast enough. I was just glad to see that Eaton County is also um, supporting the uh, resolution to declare racism a public health crisis. So the, mo the momentum seems to be there for that. So that's good. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey Bray. Anyone else? Seeing none, we will move on to committee and board reports, courts and public safety. Commissioner Snyder. Can you pop the uh, agenda? Can we pull up the courts and public safety agenda? Kristen, can you pull up the courts and public safety portion of the agenda for Commissioner Snyder, please? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Chair, the Courts and Public Safety Committee met on July 7, 2020. It was recommended that I move CPS 20 slash 7 24 through 28. We have, a, uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Snyder, a second by it, Commissioner Foster. Excuse me. Yes, excuse me. He does have through 30. I think she just, he saw. So on this committee report, there's a 29 and 30 he probably wishes to include in his motion. I do want to include that okay, 29 so, and 30 in addition yes. to what I moved. And I will continue my support. Thank you very much. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns on this? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Vice Chair Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. And Chairman Hughes. Yes. Nine yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk, and also thank you for catching that we were just about to miss one of our motions. Now, Commissioner that completes, that completes the report of the Courts and Public Safety Committee. Thank you very much, Commissioner Snyder. Now we will move on to Human Services Committee. And thank you, Madam Chair. Nash. Yes. Uh, the Human Service Committee met on July the 7th, 2020. It was recommended and I move HS2007-15. <clears throat> We have a motion. Support. Do I have a, and I, who supported that? Mahoney. Commissioner yeah. Mahoney. Is there any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none. Madam Chair, I would make one comment, and yes, that is Commissioner that um, there are, um, I believe, three more other. Uh, Wayne County, I know, did pass their resolution. Um, there's also, I believe, three more other counties that are due to pass theirs uh, later this month. Thank you very much for the information, Commissioner Nash. We are definitely on a positive trend. Anyone else? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Vice Chair Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Laring. No. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Eight yes, one no. Thank you very much. That motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair. That will conclude my report. Thank you, Commissioner Nash. Next on our agenda is the Transportation Committee, and that will be Commissioner Wilkins. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Transportation Committee met on July 2020. It was recommended TR 2007-22 through TR 2007-25. So far. We have a motion by Commissioner Wilkins, second by Commissioner Foster. Any comments, questions, or concerns? <clears throat> 
Seeing none, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Co uh, Vice Chair Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nick. Yes. And Chairman Hughes. Yes. Nine, yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk, and that motion carries. Now we will move on to, uh, the, Commissioner Wilkins, does that complete your report? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, yes, it's complete. Thank you very much. We will move mm -hmm. on to the Ways and Means Committee. Commissioner Skolnick. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Ways and Means Committee met on July 7, 2020. It was recommended and I move WM 20 slash 07 dash 51, 52, 53, and 54. Support. Thank you. We do have a motion by Commissioner Skolnick, a second by Commissioner Nash. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Madam Chair, I have a comment, if I may, or- Yes, uh, Mr. Learing. Yes, yeah, so on uh, item number 20-07-51, uh, again, I am not gonna support this motion until that we can get these uh, payments isolated, anything over $100,000, I would like to see those um, separately so that we can debate these payments, anything over $100,000 debate them separately. Thank you, Commissioner Laring, for your information. Anyone else have a comment? Question? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, we have a roll call, please. Commissioner Snyder. Commissioner yes. Snyder. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Vice Chair Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Laring. No on 51, yes on 52, 53, and 54. Thank you. Commissioner Mahoney. Commissioner Mahoney, are you unmuted? <laughs> yes. And yes on the motion for the four ways and means? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. Chairman Hughes? Yes. Eight yes, one no on 51. Nine yes on 52, 53, and 54. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That motion, the motion carries. Next, we, uh, Commissioner Skolnick, does it, do you oh, have anything else for us today? All right, Madam Chair, that completes my report. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No problem at all. Now we will move on to the chairman's report and li the liaison reports. Are there any uh, committee liaisons that have a report for us today? Yes. Go ahead, Marsha. Yeah, um, the Health West, uh, at the Health West Board, uh, we also passed the uh, resolution uh, to declare racism a public health uh, crisis. And they had already passed that and they're already implementing they're already reviewing their policies and, and I, uh, they would be a good model for our county <laughs> thank you very much anyone else seeing none we will move on uh, to the citizen appointments and reappointments the airport development committee appointments the terms will last through 1231 2022 Cindy Larson from the Chamber of Commerce, Robert Gustafson from the public sector, Rich Houdeman from private sector, and Dave Kendall from the private sector. I, I would like a motion and support, please. So moved. We have a motion by Commissioner Foster, second by Commissioner Nash. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Wilkins. I think she left somehow. Okay. Um, Vice Chair Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Mahoney. 
Commissioner Maybe. Mahoney, thank you. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Um, Commissioner, Commissioner Wilkins is back on. Okay. Commissioner Wilkins, do you vote yes on the four appointments yes. to the airport? Thank you very much. Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Chairman Hughes? Yes. Nine yes. Thank you, and that motion carries. Next, I'd like to uh, let everybody know that the Muskegon County Youth Fair will be held July 30th through the 25th. I'm not sure that that is still the way it is gonna be with the new resolutions from the governor. Uh, but as far as I know, that is true. The theme this year will be County Christmas at the Fair. The Muskegon area kids have been working hard all year for this, so I do hope that it does be able to continue. Um, they're gonna be showing their products and their hard work in the community. Also on do, July- Do we know, uh, so, uh, Chairman uh, Hughes, do we know what precautions they're taking that seems kind of out of sync with whatever what's happening everywhere else? It does, I really expected it to be canceled uh, just for the health and well-being of the children, but right. I, I don't know what's going on there and I don't know what precautions they have either. Madam Chair, I can speak to that if you would like. Thank you, please. Go ahead, Commissioner Laring. So they have canceled all of the grandstand events. Uh, they have canceled the uh, carnival uh, and all of the uh, beer tents and conference, uh, concerts that they were planning to have. Uh, they are not doing marketing. They just want a venue. Uh, they're, they're allowing the public to come in, but they're not doing any advertising. They're trying to limit the amount of public that will actually engage in it by canceling all of the grandstand events, but they do want a venue for the children to be able to compete and show the animals they've been raising. So they're, they're really trying to minimize the public uh, interaction in this event. Thank you, Commissioner Learing, And I, I definitely do appreciate that. One, I do know a young man that um, is autistic and he spends all year raising chickens to show at that event. So I know how important it is in his life. So I do appreciate all the hard work they've done to make it so the kids can at least show their, their accomplishments throughout the year. Also on July 25th, we have the Community Paddle. It's a world record edition. It will be held from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Fisherman's Landing. It's free to anyone who with a paddle craft, kayak, canoe, paddle boat, or rowboat. I'm, our illustrious uh, administrator may be out there on his kayak, just giving it a whirl. Yes, maybe I will too. I, I think I'll bring my camera then. <laughs> <laughs> not when I'm getting in or out of it. Oh no, certainly not. Madam Chair. Paddling. Yes. They're, they're also at that community paddle uh, hoping to spot the great northern white bellied <laughs> Do you well? Uh, and so that means you're going to be there. Is that what you're saying, Commissioner Skolnick? Well, I might be mistaken for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that completes my report, and we will move on to the administrator's report. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I plan on being at that event. I hope not oh, to good. fall in, right? <laughs> I hope not to. Um, so I'm going to go back. It's not on the, my list there, but I'm going to go back to the course of public safety. Um, the commissioners during this meeting asked me to go in and see if there's any other departments that would qualify under the CPS 20-07-29, which read to approve the application of grant funding, pay hazard pay premium to eligible first responders. Well, uh, Deputy Administrator researched this, and I would like her to give the board an update on what she found out. Beth? Beth, you need to unmute. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Beth Dick, Assistant County Administrator, Director of Finance. I did uh, research the Senate Bill 690, and um, as far as the hazard pay goes, there does not appear to be any other um, county employees that would qualify under the different areas of the Senate Bill. There is a section that does address um, health officials, but it appears based on the language that it uh, has to be, um, they have to be employees of the state of Michigan. So that would not um, qualify any of our um, public health or Health West employees. 
Um, but there are many other sections of Senate Bill 690 uh, that don't really spe specify related to hazard pay, but there is a lot of other funding associated uh, with this Senate bill that we could apply for. And one of them has a due date of this Friday where we can apply for public safety and public health payroll reimbursement for the month of April and May. There is $200 million available that we could apply for um, that would definitely uh, help offset those expenses that we've incurred for public safety and public health payroll during the months of April and May. Um, and there are, there are some other components in the Senate Bill 690. Um, I know that District Court has looked through and there's a section on landlord tenant um, expenses where they've researched it and found that there's a possibility of covering some of the costs of uh, some of their employees through that section. So, um, and I get notifications weekly of different uh, grants that are eligible that we could apply for, but some of them have very quick turnaround times uh, in order to apply and meet deadlines specifically to come through this Friday. Uh, so I don't know if the board would be willing to uh, consider a motion to give us some um, staff some authorization to uh, apply for some of these grants, COVID related grants that would uh, be able to help offset some of our costs and assist with our budget. I would move that. I'll support. We have a motion by Commissioner uh, Javi Wright and a second by Commissioner Mahoney. Mahoney. Beth, I think this is an excellent idea. I'm really glad to be able to do that. Uh, are there any comments, questions, or concerns? So, Madam Chair, I have a comment. Yes, Zach, go ahead. So, they can, we can only, as a commission, uh, in a full board meeting, we can only vote to move it back to committee time. I think this is an entirely different situation. It's not uh, something that will be underneath a committee. I think I will allow it this time. Got to suspend the board rules we just created. Miss, uh, Madam Chair, um, yes, this is coming under my report. I think it uh, in attorneys, Mike Helmir is with us on this, but my interpretation is it's under my report. I'm bringing it forward as a motion. That's true. And that, the that, immediate deadline. Yes, you're right. That does and that does supersede. Okay, perfect. That will work wonderfully. Are there any other comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Vice Chair Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Laring. No. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Eight yes, one no. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk, and that motion carries. Thank you. On item A there, future committee and board meetings. Uh, we did some research on this and what other counties are trying to do. It's about half and half. Half of them are trying to hold some type of a meeting in, in a way where some of the commissioners are showing up and some are not, but we're all restricted to the 10 uh, people in a room. Um, so that's why half of them are still doing the same thing that we're doing here today. Um, so our staff reached out to the college and they, they are not allowing any meetings to take place over there. Um, the mats has caused troubles with recording and with when you have more than one iPad or one more than one I, um, computer running at the same time, there's a lot of static feedback there. So to update the board, we have not found a, a facility, a room, unless it's outside, um, that would meet our needs. Uh, that would be better than Zoom that we're doing today. Um, so at this point, with the governor's extension uh, as of today to the uh, state of emergency is extended to the 11th, I believe is the date. Um, I guess I still, it's not a motion, but at this point I'd still recommend we do Zoom until we do find a facility or the limit of 10 is expanded to greater than probably 20, 25. I, I agree with that. 
I do too. I think yeah. that, that is an administrative decision, Mark. I think you can go ahead and make that. It's in the best interest of the county. We really don't have any other option right now. We really don't. Yeah. It, just another. Uh, uh, go ahead, Marsha. Factor. Yeah, it's it's actually more comfortable uh, without a mask in my home than it is with a mask in an in an office. So, um, and we have to wear masks inside. Right. And with that executive order, we have to. Right. Uh, right. I agree. Okay. The um, and hopefully, as Kathy, hopefully with Kathy Moore's information, we will be moving in the right direction shortly but until then better safe than sorry yes and the as we know the numbers are going up so we need to be careful for yep. everyone the um update on the senate bill 698 beth really uh, gave that on the funding as well um we, we don't have anything more to report except the deadlines as this friday so we'll be getting those in and we'll update you as they are awarded and then the last one is executive orders. And I put this on here because um, just, just to catch all really as to the latest executive orders. And just as of today, we received another uh, three, four, five. We got five executive orders out today. So they are in your emails. And again, the last one was the executive order for emergency declaration, which was extended to August. Yes. So that ends my report, unless someone has my, any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I'd also like to thank you for following through and making sure that our municipalities are updated when the county commissioners are with our reports from the governor and, and any updates. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Now we will move on to old business. Is there any old business to come before this committee? Madam Chair, may I? Yes, go ahead, Commissioner Foster. Um, Approximately three or four weeks ago, I asked administration to get a cost breakdown on senior millage, what we're paying administration and cost to operate this. Has there been any headway on that, Mark? Um, I would refer to um, Director Moore, if she's still on. Um, I know they were looking at those numbers, Commissioner. I'm good. I can yeah. wait. I wanted to get a breakdown. Yep, so I, I will get that to you, uh, Commissioner. The um, This year, of course, will be uh, paid year to date and maybe projected throughout the end of the year, but I will definitely get that to you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Could you make sure all the commissioners get that? I, yes, I will. And um, we do have a uh, senior millage work session scheduled for August. I don't know the exact date on top of my head, but that's I'm working on that presentation as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. I do have something that kind of follows along in that uh, for old business. The senior millage offered to the municipalities a certain amount of funding for the municipalities to use in their community. Well, Muskegon Township has dedicated some of those funds for senior uh, meals and things like that, and they're having a little trouble getting that money to them. We thought that it would actually go back to senior resources and they would send the check to the um, in organizations that we had chosen and instead they said it has to come from the county well the municipalities need to get that money so that they can use it and get it out in the community so we need to somehow expedite that situation so that the municipalities can use the money that that they were given but didn't actually go to them yet so I don't know what we need to do there, Beth or Kathy, but we need to get that yes. money to the municipalities so they can spend it. Absolutely, Commissioner Hughes. So, you know, due to COVID, we did have a delay because um, of some closures, but public health was still here and we were still working, but we did not, you know, we thought those municipalities were closed. Um, Muskegon Charter Township, I actually have the check in hand. Um, I sent notification to uh, Jennifer Hodges yesterday and um, she was, she's gonna get back with me to let me know if she'd like me to put that in the mail or if she'd like to pick it up or have me drop it off. Okay, I, I will contact her and we will, I'll tell you what, Kathy, we will just plan on picking that up. Either Jennifer or myself will pick that check up from you tomorrow so we can get that check to out to the people in our township. How about that? Awesome, so Thank that's you. fine. I have, I have it in hand. 
um, just ring the doorbell. We can bring the check out to the door, or Perfect. if you come in, you'll have to answer a series of questions. That's okay. And have a mask. Thank well, you. One of, one of us will get it with, we'll come with our questions and our mask. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Commissioner Mahoney, I, I yes. believe Dalton Township is having the same issue in terms of trying to get cash for their particular program. So if she would look into that, it would be helpful as well. Yes, I am happy to report that uh, thanks to county administrator who helped us expedite that check, uh, Tony Barnes picked that check on Monday. Ah, good. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not always in the loop. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I also had, you just sparked an idea and I had, I wanted to ask our um, health director, um, is it possible that if municipalities are getting that money and they have not come up with a program, can they designate those funds to be for COVID testing strictly for seniors? Yes, so the, the way it works is that their governing board would have to approve the use of those dollars, and then the county um, commissioner that uh, within that jurisdiction would approve it. But yes, they have um, more flexibility than a grant. This is um, the board authorized an allocation, sort of like the state allocates money to public health, we'll say for communicable disease. We can, we can use that as long as we use it for the purpose allocated. And that's the same uh, with the municipalities. Um, the, just the condition is that their governing body, whether it's the council or, or board, um, has to approve it. And then our county commissioner has to endorse the, the plan as well. Yeah, I just thought because that being the most vulnerable age group um, and we're running somewhat mm -hmm shorter of uh, locales that that would be a great way those municipalities can support the seniors if they don't have anything else already planned very good idea commissioner nash thank you very much anyone else under old business seeing none how about new business anybody with some new business seeing none is there any public comment this can be on anything is there any public comment i would like to make a public comment Yes, go right ahead, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel Novak here. Um, I had addressed the county commissioners in an earlier meeting about Pioneer Park and the leaf buildup. And I had also sent subsequent emails to all of the commissioners, have not heard back from them, but wanted to follow up that A, I'm still concerned about it, and B, I wondered if anything was being done about the leaf dam at Pioneer Park. I don't believe that Bob Lukens is on today. He is in charge of the parks. Uh, Bob, are you on? I am, Commissioner. Okay. Do you have any kind of information for Rachel? Uh, yes. We received um, three uh, proposals back from engineering firms that were going to go out to the park and conduct an investigation on the um, the the washout that happened there on May 18th. Um, so we will be moving forward with that and um, conducting that investigation. Thank you. We normally don't answer a question in public comment, but this has been uh, more than one question on the same situation that I felt obligated to at least, you know, get some information out there. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Anyone else for public comment? Yes. James Kelly from MSU Extension. Go ahead, James. Um, I just wanted to check in. I sent an email today with a, a copy of a quarterly update for the commissioners, which I hope you will take the time to read through. Um, sent it to Mark Heisenbach, and he will forward that on to you. Um, just giving you an overview of our activity over the last three months, um, focusing initially on our statewide response and then funneling down into what we've been doing on a more regional level, and then finally in Muskegon County. So I encourage you to read that and also to forward that on to anyone that you think might have some interest. Um, highlights the, word of, the work of Frank Cox and his capacity building and career exploration. So he continues to do programming through Muskegon High School with their 21st Century Community Learning Center using Google Classes. Um, it focuses on some of our community nutrition programs. 
Uh, we have started actually some new programs during the isolation uh, period using virtual programming, of course. So new relationship with the Women's Veterans Center where we're doing some uh, health and nutrition classes. Uh, we're working with Muskegon Heights Public Schools, planning some new classes in the new school year, we hope. And then also uh, a new relationship with Jefferson Street Community Garden in Muskegon Heights. And I want to highlight also the work of Wade Sires, who is our food safety educator in Muskegon County. The food safety team has obviously been a very popular source of information over the last three months. And they have reached out to and provided information that's gone out to literally thousands of folks through videos, through um, print materials, social media. Um, some of their information has actually gone out now to 44 states, 75 counties across Michigan, and 21 countries. So we're seeing how much expand significantly as we post more and more content online. And finally, quickly, 4-H, um, we have continued to try and provide, and we are providing a lot of online programming for the youth to get involved with. There is a little online programming burnout going on right now, so that's a challenge. We are working with uh, the County Fair Association to provide support as we can, but at this point they are moving ahead, um, as you heard, through their modified program. Um, 20 out of 83 counties are now doing a modified program or they have canceled, canceled their fairs entirely, which might be of interest for you to know. We are open in our Muskegon office three half days a week for essential business only, by appointment only, and I will leave that at that for the moment. Thanks. Thank you, James. I encourage all the county commissioners when we get that to forward that onto our municipalities. There's a lot of great things that our constituents would be interested in. And so would the people from the townships and cities and villages. So thank you. Is there any other public comment? Any other public comment? Um, can I go? Sure, go ahead. Jennifer Hodges, uh, Supervisor of Muskegon Charter Township. Chairman Hughes, I just want to thank you for the follow-up um, regarding our senior millage funds. I did email Director Moore back um, with some follow-up questions, so hopefully she has a chance to respond to that. And uh, Commissioner Hughes, if you wouldn't mind picking that check up and delivering it, that would be really helpful to us. I will be happy to. In the future, I would maybe suggest or ask that um, the process be a little bit spelled out a little bit more clearly. I guess there was some confusion on all of our ends, and perhaps if the funding, the check is coming directly to each municipality, maybe sending that out with the expectation of reporting at the end of the fiscal year, and perhaps um, money comes back if we can't account for it or if we didn't um, distribute it ourselves. Some sort of system like that would be very beneficial or more clear direction on how it works would be helpful in the future. So, but that is it. Thank you for clearing everything up and um, I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Marcia, did you have something? Yeah, I just wanted, to, I'm, I'm glad that uh, Jennifer picked up on that because I had some of the same concerns with that money, that, that accountability, we just need to know how it's being spent and, yep. and uh, so that we can imp continuously improve the program. Perfect. Anyone else? Are we in public Pardon, Pardon, me? Board comment? Pardon me? Are we are we in public comment or final board comment? We're in public comment right now, but I don't see any more public. So Chris we will... Kayala is that raising oh, Chris Kyle Chris, go ahead. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um I'm kind of concerned about um the resolution that was just passed concerning racism as a public health crisis. I'm concerned that it wasn't uh, shown to the public at all and that there was no ability for the public to understand what was going on or what the commissioners have thought about it. And I'm also concerned that the commissioners didn't have any uh, public discussion about it. So in reading the other um, resolutions from Ingham and uh, Eaton counties, I'm also uh, wondering um, the resolutions that they made, the actions to go forward, how they could actually benefit uh, the county um, in their case and, and in our case as well. So um, I think uh, it would be good to know that something's coming up if the board actually wanted the public to know. And I think they 
we should have uh, plenty of time to look and to see the things that the commissioners are doing. Thank, Thank you. you, Chris. Appreciate that. Anyone else? Anyone else on public comment? Seeing none, we will move on to final board comments. Anyone with final board comments? Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Marcia. Yeah, to the previous gentleman, I couldn't catch his name. Um, that uh, document was in the board packet for the committee meeting for the Human uh, Services Committee. Uh, so it's, you know, the public has access to that um, as well as we do. So uh, uh, it wasn't treated any differently than any other resolution or any other item that we vote on. So. Thank you, Commissioner. I was going to repeat the same thing. We, it was um, a week ago. It was on our um, Human Services Committee. So, Great. anyone else? Yeah, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to add on to that. I wanted to add on to that too. That we. Um, Go ahead, Commissioner. I, I think he might have missed that meeting. Can you hear me? I, I yes. think it's possible he did. Yes. Okay. I think that the gentleman might have missed that meeting because I know we had an in-depth meeting on that. But I also wanted to just put out there that we had a, uh, a we had a previous meeting before that that encompassed uh, the, the, our chairwoman and, and myself, Commissioner Wilkins, and some other uh, department heads and community leaders that discussed that before we even brought it to the uh, committee. So just didn't want people to think that this is something just came to the board by happenstance. But there wasn't anything in the board minutes about it. Our board minutes are very brief. Madam Chair, I also wanted to commend our administrative team for looking into the Senate Bill 690 and uh, researching that to find some some funding that maybe we may be eligible for and uh, also taking a look at all the different uh, grants that are coming down because of the COVID um, that we can look at. Um, I think that's going to be a big help to this county if we can win some of those grants. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone else? Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, Charles just sparked a memory last night at Casanova. Their fire chief actually asked me if there was any part of that Senate Bill 690. And I'm asking the administrator, if they come across anything that could benefit fire departments, could you pass that out to the municipalities? Yes, we, we can. We'll send that out. Uh, the, the deadlines, they have to get that stuff in by Friday. Yeah, they um, realize we, that. Okay. Yes, we can. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Uh, comments, yeah. board comments. Madam, I do have a comment if I may. Yes, Commissioner Lehrer, go right ahead. So uh, I do not agree with this resolution. Uh, I don't believe that this current health crisis that we have has anything to do with racism. Uh, secondly, I think we can all agree that the idea of systemic racism doesn't happen tonight. It's a long-term um, chain of events. And uh, I would suggest that this is a Democrat board, a Democrat county. So if this has been going on for a period of time, we know where the blame lays. Um, so the Republicans have not controlled this county since the 80s. So if we have systemic racism here, um, it, it lies directly on your shoulders. Well, thank you, Commissioner yeah. Larry, for your opinion. Anyone else? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Support. Motion in support. Madam Clerk, could I have a roll call vote to adjourn the meeting? Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Larry. Yes. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Commissioner Wilkins. Commissioner, Vice, me, please. Vice Chair Foster. Yes. 
And Commissioner Wilkins, did she vote to adjourn? She, yes, sir. It's, yes, it's she muted, did. though. Okay, and Chairman Hughes? Yes. Nine to adjourn. And we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.